a very good evening uh, to all uh, dear brothers and sisters in christ so we thank our uh, lord and our savior jesus christ uh, for giving it another day to count us among the living so as you all know so last week uh, we studied a uh, important uh, class so the seed of the woman we saw the seed of the woman is not only jesus but jesus head and the body so today we are going to study uh, one of the ways of studying the bible you all must be remembering we have studied about how to study the bible we have studied the 10 uh, different steps to understand the bible and today we are going to see one of the steps to understand the bible one of the languages in the bible is the type and anti type so what is the meaning of type and anti type if you see the modern word we can use it as a model so what is the model whenever a uh, architect uh, builds a structure he actually builds a small model uh, which is uh, the real uh, image of the actual uh, construction that is supposed to come so that is uh, called as a model it is just a image and a reflection of the original uh, structure or else uh, if you see our face in a mirror we can only see the reflection but it's not, not the real so similarly you see this is what we are going to study today the reflection and the real okay so what is this word uh, type and anti type to better understand imagine if you go to a cloth shop to buy some uh, shirts the textile uh, shop owner will show us various types of shirts but uh, once we don't like any of the shirts immediately you see the sales person will tell us sir which type of shirt you want please tell me that type i will give it to you so that means uh, a type means always a example so similarly in the bible there is lot of types and anti types okay so let us read that one in uh, romans 15:4 that is given to us in romans 15:4 brother can anyone read brother for whatsoever things were written a fore time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope mm so what to whatsoever things that were written before were written for our learning that means all the things written in the old testament it is for our learning that means we have lessons everything in the old testament so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures you see that means the study about the old testament gives us the patience and comfort that we might may have hope Therefore, dear brethren, all the things written in the Old Testament are just the shadow of the real things to come. Let us read Hebrews ten one. Hebrews ten one. Muna sister, can you read? For the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually. make the commerce their own to perfect very good sir the law having a shadow of the good things to come so whatever was written in the old testament is just a shadow of a things which are coming in the new testament so what does it signify actually so all the things in the old testament what does it signify whom does it signify in the new testament see that is given to us in colossians 217 colossians 217 joel brother can you read which are which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of christ very good which are a shadow of things to come so what does it signify the real it signifies christ all the things uh, which are written in the old testament it actually signifies uh, everything that is happened in the new testament okay to understand this one we'll take a simple example from the old testament and see how that correlates beautifully to god's plan how it signifies christ you see the wonderful example in the old testament 
is uh, Abraham, father of faith. He had so much of wealth. He was such a rich person. He had everything but not have a hair. Once when God told her, you see, uh, to leave his uh, place and come to the promised land, Abraham sojourned uh, and traveled to the promised land. He sacrificed all his uh, friends, uh, relatives, uh, father, brothers, and he traveled in God's path. You see, and after God making the promise to Abraham, nearly after 25 years, you see, the three angels appeared to him in his house. And uh, that is the time that uh, God, uh, you see, revived his promise saying that uh, in thee I will bless all the nations of the earth. And uh, Sarah shall have a child. Immediately, you see, as uh, the three angels uh, proclaim this one, Sarah laughs. It is given in Genesis 18-12 that Sarah laughed within herself. You see, saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. You see, but yet, uh, that was the faith of Sarah. She trusted in the Lord. And uh, when the same promise was again uh, repeated to Abraham, Abraham fell on his face uh, and laughed. You see, so that was the faith of Abraham. He said, Shall I, who is 100 years old, and Sarah 90 years old, have a child? You see, the Abraham. But that was the beginning of the faith. And uh, as per the faith, uh, God blessed them with a beautiful child called as Isaac. Isaac uh, began to grow. Imagine Isaac, uh, a person, you see, the only son of a wealthy Abraham. Abraham had so, was so much rich uh, that uh, the land was not sufficient to contain uh, the uh, flocks of Abraham and Lot. Hence, so both the people had to separate. Imagine he had so much of uh, uh, flocks uh, in his house and so much of herds uh, that uh, it was innumerable. If you have to compare Abraham to any of the richest person in this world, you can just uh, think about the richest <clears throat> person in this world. Uh, Mukesh Ambani or Bill Gates. Imagine if they have a son, that only one son, how they would take care, they would give all the facilities in this world. They will be, you see, living a luxurious lifestyle. You know, how much bodyguards did Abraham have? Eh? Abraham had 318 bodyguards in his house. Let us see that one in Genesis 14, 14, mother. Genesis 14, 14. Anil, sister, can you read? <laughs> And when Abraham heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. Mm -hmm. See, how many persons were there? 318. Huh? You see, 318 trained servants, bodyguards, born in his house. Imagine 318 means uh, such a big aircraft is required to take entire 318 people. Imagine, uh, even today, if you see, not even the America president has so much of bodyguards. So much of bodyguards, even in those days, who had uh, Abraham had uh, the Abraham. See, as the days went on, um, as uh, Abraham was blessed, suddenly one day, God calls Abraham, you see, to test him whether he would remain faithful or not, and tells Abraham, Abraham, now take thy only son, whom thou lovest, and offer him as a sacrifice. Let us read that one in Genesis 22, 1 and 2. Genesis 22, 1 and 2. Anu, sister, can you read? Anu, Magar? <coughs> Genesis 22, 1 and 2. Yeah. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. 
and he said, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou love, lovest, and get thee into the land of Moria, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountain which I will tell thee of. Uh -huh. See? Oh, God tested Abraham. How did God call Abraham? Abraham, now take thine son. Huh? Did he stop there? No. He said, uh, he tested and said, your only son, Isaiah, whom you love very much. This was actually reminding to Abraham that uh, the attachment, uh, you see, he had on Isaac. You see, God reminded about his affection and love upon Isaac. He pressed upon it and he said, go and offer him as a burnt offering. Uh -huh. So, you see, so dear brethren, therefore, you see, that was a really difficult thing for Abraham. Imagine, God was not visible. He just heard a sound. You see, but yet, uh, so many thoughts would have crossed uh, his mind, no? He would have thought, uh, oh, God is offering my son as a sacrifice. How can God act, uh, ask a sacrifice? Human sacrifice was forbidden. So suddenly, God was asking this one. This would have brought so much of uh, thoughts in the mind of Abraham. But Abraham rose the next day. Immediately, he put a, you see, eh? took two servants, took an ass, you see. And then uh, he put the, the wood and everything and uh, took Isaac and traveled to Mount Moriah. So, let us read uh, verse 3. Verse 3, brother. Uh, Roshan Kamal. Uh, can you read? Thank you. Early the, early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he said... When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about. Ah, see, early in the morning, he said last and took uh, two of his uh, servants with him along with Isaac. Now, did uh, Abraham inform uh, Sarah and go while going to offer uh, Isaac as a sacrifice? Did he inform? You see, it's not given in the scripture, brother. I'm sure Abraham would not have informed completely, detailedly. Tomorrow, I am going to offer my son as a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. God has asked. Imagine if uh, Abraham had told these things to uh, huh? Sarah. What would have Sarah done? Sarah would have never allowed Isaac. Oh, he's my... Old age son, I am never going to leave it. But Abraham was very wise in dealing with Sarah. You see, dear brethren, let us see what he told. We will realize all those things in the later class. So, they traveled to Mount Maria. How many days did Abraham travel? You see, Abraham traveled for three days. Let us read verse 4. Gopal brother, can you read verse 4? Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Ah, three days. That means three days uh, he would have uh, journeyed uh, to reach Mount Moriah. Imagine what all thoughts would have come for Abraham now. Yeah? He's just going to see his son only for three days after that one. We don't know whether he's going to return or not. Dear Bhadran, how hard, how painful it would be for a father to see that his son is going to live only for three days. Imagine if a doctor tells your son, 
has got a deadly disease he's going to pass away in 3 days how would we behave we would leave everything and spend time with our son lavishly you see taking care of him and give him what all he wants but abraham was taking him for death dear brethren so many negative thoughts would have come but uh, abraham was strong in faith he overcame everything you know when he came at the mountain what did he do he leave the two servants there and uh, they both went on mount moria now the servants asked master when are you going to return and what was the answer of uh, abraham read verse 5 verse 5 brother munna sister can you read verse 5 and abraham said unto his young man abide ye here with the ass and i and the lad will go yonder and worship and came again to you, come again to you ah what did abraham tell we will go and come again to you not that we will go and i will come now dear brethren abraham had faith on the lord and though my son isaac is sacrificed yet he will return back that son to me so in faith he said we will sacrifice and come we will come so as uh, you see abraham uh, was uh, climbing uh, the mount moria along with isaac you know who took all the wood for the burnt offering on his shoulders it was isaac isaac carried all the wood on his shoulders read verse 6 brother read verse 6 sunita sister can you read and abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both of them together mm, you see who carried the wood it was isaac uh, taking the fire the knife everything in his hand you see and he followed his father but as he was going he saw everything what was there huh fire is there huh knife is there wood is there dad is there i am there everything is there but what is not there for the sacrifice huh the lamb is not there for the sacrifice immediately isaac uh, tells him huh father we have everything but what is not there huh where is the burnt offering you know what did uh, abraham reply for this one abraham said ha uh, huh? my son who will provide for the sacrifice you see the lord will provide for the sacrifice read verse 8 verse 8 brother uh, anu sister can you read and abraham said my son god will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together both of them went together please underline all these things this has got importance we'll see then they came on the mount moria abraham built a beautiful altar you see then uh, he laid uh, all the wood and uh, he laid isaac also on the altar huh? verse 9 brother verse 9 uh Munna sister can you read verse 9 and they came, and they came to the place which god had told him of and abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood hmm laid him on the altar on the wood imagine you see when uh, abraham was supposed to sacrifice his son uh, isaac Isaac was a teenager you see that means a lad lad means usually somewhere around uh, between uh, before 20 years uh, because the bible says that uh, abraham was blessed with a son at 100 years uh, old and sarah was 90 and uh, sarah died at the age of 127 years and there's the age uh, there's the time that isaac got married so he would have been somewhere in his teen 
imagine a multi millionaire son only son how would abraham would have nurtured his son he would have given all the best food to his son huh and abraham at this point of time he was almost nearly 120 years old imagine the brain 120 years old man could have been easily punched and uh, beaten you see by his son and his son would have easily freed himself and ran from his father oh yo my father is sacrificing me he is killing me but uh, isaac uh, did not do that run isaac surrendered to his father you see and uh, he bound and laid him on the altar that means isaac voluntarily obeyed his father without any compulsion imagine today do we have such children if you go and tell to buy something for the market only they will start arguing you go i go why go hmm? see isaac even to taste death he was ready to obey his father immediately abraham after binding took the knife to slaughter his son so immediately god called from the heaven saying abraham abraham you see don't uh, uh, lay uh, thy hand upon the lad read genesis 22 12 and 13 gopal brother read brother genesis 22 12 and 13 uh. and he said lay not thine hand upon the lad ah neither... wait brother lay not thine hand upon the lad lad means what son a boy not that he was a man that means he was a very young man young boy you can say a teenage boy not even about 20 years old your brother imagine what did god say don't lay thy hand upon the lad god loved him so much for his obedience your brother imagine which son will try to obey his father even to die Huh? on the altar he is taking the knife also he did not even shake or not move around what a perfect third of the rain and uh, huh? continue with the now now go over with the continue huh? neither do thou anything unto him for now i know that thou fearest god seeing thou has not withheld thy son thine only son from me and abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns and abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the in the stead of his son aha uh-huh. you see then god told now i know that you really love me that you really fear me then abraham turned and saw what was there ha huh? what was there you see dear brethren there was a ram in the bush it seems So Abraham took the ram and did and offer the ram. But what does the Bible say? It says Abraham took the ram and offered him. Him means what? It was like instead of his son, the Abraham. You see, and offered uh, as a sacrifice on the altar. The Abraham. You see, this is the type. is the story of old testament you would have read so many times you would have heard so many times in our sunday class but what is the meaning of it dear brethren this is a beautiful model this is a beautiful example of the things to come this was just the image of the real thing so the sacrifice of abraham by a sacrifice of isaac by abraham was just a mirror was just a image so who does abraham signify in the bible if you see abraham sacrifices his only son similarly god sacrifices his only son jesus so that's what abraham in the bible always signifies god and isaac in the bible signifies jesus so see the brethren has ha abraham loved his only son the brethren so similarly god loved jesus so many times so many scriptures are there no you see proverbs 8 30 31 and even when jesus took baptism what did the, the word of god come this is my beloved son in whom i am very much pleased you see such was the love of god 
towards Jesus to Abraham. When God told to Abraham to offer him as a burnt offering, you see, he did not hesitate. He said, offer an only son. Your only son. Dear brethren, similarly, Jesus was God's only begotten son. You see, that's what the Bible says in Roman 3, John, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, only, only son. Why only son? The stress is given because he is the only perfect son of our God. Dear brethren, let us read and uh, Romans 13, 8, sorry, Revelation 13, 8. Revelation 13, 8, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Ah, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. What does it mean? Devudran, you see, just to die immediately, that is nothing greater. But to understand that you are going to die many, many days before, it's very difficult to face death. Even if it's suddenly death comes, it's easy. But even after knowing that you're going to die, to face death is very difficult. In this case, Isaac did not know anything. So Abraham was the one who suffered most because he knew that my son is going to live only for three days. So similarly, if you see who suffered the most, was it our Jesus was it our God on the cross? If you see dear brethren, huh? it is uh, our Lord, our God Almighty. Because Jesus knew that he was supposed to die on the cross. Uh, but uh, to give his son to die on the cross, uh, that was very difficult. Dear brethren. And then, uh, how many days did they travel? Uh? You see, they traveled three days. Uh -huh. Let me tell me, what is the three days of journey of Abraham with Isaac, both together? What does it signify? Huh? What does it signify? How many days, how many years did Jesus do his ministry on the earth? Three and a half. Very good. That's what it signifies. And uh, next, uh, who took the wood uh, upon the shoulder for the sacrifice? Who took it? Uh? Isaac. Who? Very good, Isaac. sir. Isaac. So similarly, who took the cross? And carried it on Mount Kolkata. Uh -huh. Who took it? Who took the cross upon himself? Jesus. Jesus. A wooden cross. Beautiful. See, then when they reached the top, he was bound and laid silently on the altar. Did Isaac fight? Did Isaac uh, grumble? Or did he speak any word? Why, Dad, what are you doing? What is this you are doing? Who told you? Call that God and speak. Did he question his father anything? No. Total obedience. Similarly, when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus never murmured. So many people tempted Jesus, if you are son of God, come on. We will trust you. But Jesus never came. That was the obedience of Isaac and Jesus. But as God took the knife to slaughter it, it was almost finished in God's sight. But God hold without him. No, 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 no. Don't lay your hand on the child. You should have taken a ram and sacrifice. So similarly, when Jesus died, everybody thought that Jesus is gone forever. No. God never allowed Jesus like that only. He was resurrected the third day. So similarly read in the Bible, Abraham had faith about the resurrection. But though his son Isaac will die, he will come in the resurrection. Read Hebrews 11 chapter 17 to 19 brother. Hebrews 11 chapter 17 to 19. Gopal brother can you read? By faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises offered up uh, him only begotten son of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Uh -huh. See, accounting that God was able to raise him even from the dead, God will surely raise him from the dead. 
He had so much of uh, assurance. In the same figure, Isaac was received from the dead. So similarly, Jesus died and was resurrected the third day. This is a beautiful type. And it now you got the picture, though. type, anti-type. Correct now? Model, real thing. You see, image, real thing. Huh? You understood now? Now let us continue a little bit further. Just uh, uh, very easy, very beautiful. See, after this one, what happened? Isaac grew. As Isaac grew older, you know, the marriage of Isaac came. You see, that time, uh, what did Abraham tell? You don't take huh, a bride for my son Isaac. Don't go to my hometown and take a bride. So, his chief servant, Eliezer, was chosen. This is all given to you in Genesis 24, 2 to 4. You see, go to my land and get uh, my son for my a wife for my son Isaac. Eliezer, the chief servant of Abraham's house, you see, obeyed this one. Read only one verse, brother. Genesis 24, 2. Genesis 24, 2. Joel, ah, okay, go brother, read. Um, I'll read further. Only verse 2. And Abraham said unto his eldest servant of his house that ruled over all that he had put, mm. I pray thee thy hand under my thigh. Okay. So yeah. who was told? The chief servant. No. He went and obeyed Abraham and he took 10 camels to, you see, get a bride for Isaac. Read verse 10. Uh, Sunita, sister, can you read verse 10? And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. Very good. Sir. Ten camels. So upon ten camels, uh, uh, you see, Eliezer comes to the town. Then he came to the town and he was very much shocked. How can I select a, a bride, a beautiful bride for Isaac? I don't know, Lord. Then he begins to pray. Lord, I don't know what to do. But uh, give me a sign. A girl who comes to draw the water and give me to drink, not only to me, but also the camels, That let that be a sign that uh, she is mine. You see? Master's, uh, you see, son's uh, pride. Read Genesis 24, 12 to 14, brother. Genesis tw 24, 12 to 14. Kamal, sister, can you read Genesis 24, 12 to 14? And he said, O oh Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this, this day and sew kindness up to my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water and the daughter of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the, uh, that the damsel uh, to whom I shall say, lay down thy pit picture. The picture. I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say drink and I will give thy camels drinks also. Let the same be she she that thou hast appointed for the servant Isaac and thereby shall I know that thou hast sued kindness of to my master. Very good. Sir. Very good. So that was his prayer. And as soon as he prayed and lifted his eyes, immediately a beautiful, you see, girl came running to the, you see, well. And, uh, you see, immediately uh, Eliezer went to uh, that girl and asked for the water. Immediately, you know, what did uh, uh, Rebecca do? She filled the pitcher and gave him also water and gave the entire camels also water. Read Genesis 24, 15 to 17. 
Genesis 24, 15 to 17. Joel, brother, can you read? And it came to pass before he had done sp speaking that behold, Rebekah came to out, came out who was born to Bethuel, son of Michal, the wife of Naor, Abram's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant, servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of my pitcher. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hast and laid down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. Mm. Continue. And when she had done giving him, him a drink, she said, I will draw water for the camel, camels also until they have done drinking. And she hast and empty her pitcher onto the trough and ran again onto the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And the man, wondering at her, held his peace to wait whether, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Oh, see, immediately, uh, you see, Rebecca came. And uh, Eliezer did not know, but as he lifted the eyes, he saw she was very beautiful to look at uh, and uh, immediately ran and asked for the water. What did Rebecca say? Come, master, come. I'll give you water. And uh, not only for you, I'll give you water for all the ten camels. Eh? Imagine, you know, uh, as uh, she told, she did not just to tell it by words. Uh, only for just uh, a pretense sake or nothing. You see, she began to take the picture and uh, take the water and give it to all the camels. Uh. You know, you all know very well that a camel uh, doesn't drink water. But if you start drinking, it will drink more than 50, you see, pitchers of uh, water at a time. You know, this is the 50 picture you can see. Huh? This much of water, a camel, single camel drinks. Uh, then imagine about 10 camels, how much, uh, you see, water she has to give. Will anybody a beautiful girl do this one? Yeah? Will anybody, a beautiful girl who comes to their house, will they welcome and do all these things? And come, 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 sit, sit. I'll prepare this, prepare that and give. Nobody will do it, you But uh, this was her beautiful character. As soon as uh, uh, Eliezer saw, he held his peace. Surely my God has blessed me. That immediately, uh, he inquires about the, you see, Rebecca and immediately goes and meets uh, his uh, brother, uh, and uh, you see, Eliezer uh, gifts uh, Rebecca with a few precious things. Uh, one is a golden earring, you see, and a golden bracelet and uh, beautiful jewels of uh, gold. That is all given in Genesis 24, 22 and 53. And uh, you see, he goes and meets his uh, uh, brother. Uh, uh, and uh, you know what uh, uh, Laban asks uh, Laban ask, uh, Rebecca, whether are you willing to go with Eliezer? Now, what was the reply of Rebecca? Read Genesis 24:58. Genesis 24:58. Munna sister, can you read Genesis 24:58? And they and they called Rebecca and said unto her, Wilt thou go with this man? And she said, I will go. Uh, she said, I will go. Did she inquire? Uh, how much education is done? How much property is having? You tell me, please give me all the details. Then I will come and marry him. No. Simply, uh, do you want to go? Uh, did she ask her, show me the photo? I'll see whether he's beautiful or not. <laughs> no, dear brother. That was the faith of Rebecca. Immediately she agreed to go and she traveled on the same 10 camels to meet Isaac. As soon as she, she saw Isaac from far, she immediately got down from the camel and covered his face. You see, 
This is all given in Genesis 24, 63 to 65. Okay. We read uh, later. Now, what is the meaning of this one? We have continued the type and antitype. You see, we have come to know that Abraham signifies God. So, Isaac signifies Jesus. Now, you tell me, the wife of Isaac is Rebecca. Now, who does Rebecca signify? Huh? The bride of the bridegroom. Jesus signifies the church. You know, and now in the Bible, is the church and Jesus compared to bride and bridegroom? Yes, it is compared to bride and bridegroom. Are they going to marry in the future? Yes, they are going to marry in the future. Revelation 19.7, brother. Revelation 19.7. Gopal, brother, can you read? Hmm. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready. Ah, the wife has made herself ready. Uh -huh. That means the marriage of the Lamb is come. That means uh, Jesus Christ is going to marry the church. Uh, and who does Eliezer signify? Eliezer is the chiefest of the servant. Now this Eliezer signifies the Holy Spirit. You see, now God is selecting uh, the bride through which? Uh, through his chiefest, uh, you see, the Holy Spirit. Uh, through the Holy Spirit, only God is selecting the church from the entire world. Uh, uh, God's Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, and uh, Immediately, what was the identification of uh, Rebecca? She was beautiful. Uh -huh. Similarly, beauty. God is seeing our beauty. What is the beauty which God sees? Uh? God is not seeing our uh, outward beauty. Whether you are looking so beautiful, fair. No, no, no. God is looking at the beauty of our character, dear brethren. He is seeing our character. Huh? See, First Peter 3, 3 to 4. 1 Peter 3, chapter 3 to 4. Please read. Joel Buddha, uh, Gopal Buddha. Hmm. Who's adoring, let it not be that, that outward adoring of planting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of uh, apparel, but let it be the hidden, hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quit spirit which is in the sight of God of great price. Mm -hmm. Let it not be the outward adorning. God is not seeing outward beauty. He is seeing our inner heart condition. How beautiful are we in our heart? And uh, what was our uh, character? She was a virgin. She did not know any man. Similarly, we should only follow Jesus, not any other, you see, uh, lords in this world. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. You can't serve the world and the Lord. You have to decide your brethren. And uh, the beauty of character of Rebecca, that she gave water not only to Eliezer, but also to the camels. Uh, you know, what is the meaning of uh, camels? The brethren, uh, the truth. Uh, what is this water? Jesus said, no. Whosoever believes on him, you know, on me, from him, the living waters shall flow. So this is the living water, the water of truth. You see, that should uh, yeah, flow from us. We should be always interested to give the truth to other people. Read John 7, 38. John 7, 38. Sunita sister or Anil brother, can you read? John 7.38 He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Ah, flow rivers of living water. Uh -huh. Then, uh, what did uh, she do? She was so zealous and so interested she gave the water for all the camelers. She never felt tired. Similarly, we should be very zealous for the Lord's activities. We should never be tired. Never feel that this is boring. We should always be ready to sacrifice for the Lord. See, that's what uh, Apostle Paul says. This is how the church is engaged to Christ. It seems. 
read 2 Corinthians 11 2. 2 Corinthians 11 2. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 2. Joel Buddha, can you read? For I am jealous over you with godly jealously, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Aha, one husband. Present as chaste virgin to Christ. Virgin to Christ. Godly jealousy. Uh -huh. Now, Eliza gave gift to Rebecca. Uh -huh. God gives us also gift uh, through the Holy Spirit. What is that one? Gold. Gold in the Bible always signifies divine nature. Silver in the Bible signifies truth. Psalms 12, 6. You see the brethren? And uh, she he gave you clothes also. Clothes means what? God gives us the robe of righteousness. Revelation 19.8. Uh, read uh, Psalms 12, 6. Munna sister, can you read Psalms 12, 6? Where is our Gopal sister's sister? Munna sister, please read. Okay, brother. Psalm 12, 6. And other brethren, please open Revelation 19.8. Psalm 12, 6, the words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Purified seven times, word of God. The Bible, you see, God gives us more understanding of the Bible. Read Revelation 19, 8, somebody. Who can read? And to her was granted that she should, should be array in fine linen, clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Righteousness of the saints, dear brethren. And uh, you see, what we given? Earrings, uh, bracelet. This Allah has got a meaning. Earrings means we should be very attentive to hear the word of God. Bracelets means always ready to serve the Lord. And how did uh, Rebecca travel? She traveled on the ten camels. Is it so difficult to travel on... Uh, 10 camels. Yes, it's not so easy. It is not a luxurious smooth road. It's a desert. You sit in a camel and ride, just go for a ride for 100 meters. You will tell immediately stop the camel and get down. It's a bumpy ride. Beautiful virgin traveling more than 300 kilometers in the desert without knowing where she is going. Who is he? Dear brother, yet uh, she traveled on the 10 camels. What are the 10 camels uh, signify in the Bible? You see, Camels, horses, donkey, always in the Bible signifies doctrine. The ten important doctrines we have to sit upon. We have to have faith on these ten important doctrines. Then only we can meet Isaac or else we can't meet Isaac. So as soon as Rebecca sees Isaac from the far, she immediately gets on from the camel. So... We are going to see Jesus. We are going to see Jesus face to face. When? Not on this side of the life, but after our death. When we meet our Lord in the air, you see, we are going to see him face to face. So, we need to cover our face by the veil means we need to pass over from this side of the veil to that side. We need to leave this fleshly, you see, body and go in the spirit to being, then only can we see Jesus face to face. Dear brethren, this is about a type and antitype. Similarly, there are a lot of type and antitype in the Bible. Entire Old Testament. You see, everything is a beautiful type. Take Abraham, take Joseph, take Jacob, or take Isaac, Rebecca, Abraham, huh? Noah, Daniel, Job. All these beautiful subjects are there. God willing, we are going to study all those things in the coming future days. So may the Lord add his blessings to these words. Any doubts, any questions anybody is having, please ask. Anybody is having any questions, any doubts? Okay. Then uh, 